In this week's experiment, we're going to look at some ways that we can use color to characterize and quantify some of the experiments that we do in Gen Chem 1 and, more importantly, a lot of the experiments that we're going to be doing in Gen Chem 2. So, what you see right now is going to be your most important tool in understanding how color behaves. It's a spectrophotometer. So, let's take a little tour of this spectrophotometer and see what things it can measure, what things it can do. The first thing I'm going to do is turn it on because it takes a little while for it to warm up. So, right down here is the on switch. So, you see that it's 0, 1, those are standard on, off. This is also the 0% transmittance switch. So, let's click that to turn it on. And you see the display has come on and is live. So, while this is warming up, let's just take a quick look at some of the controls. So, again, we've got our on off and 0% transmittance switch. We've also got a filter selector and that's going to become more important as we start doing our experiments because depending on whether we're measuring wavelengths in the 340 to 599 nanometer region or the 600 to 950 nanometer region, we need this switch to be in different positions for the different filters. So for now we're going to start at the low end so I'll switch that to the 340 to 600 range. The other dial on the front of the spectrophotometer is 100% transmittance, 0% absorbance. So we can turn this so we can look at it. Percent transmittance and absorbance are just different ways of describing how much light either is transmitted by a sample or is absorbed by a sample. Moving up to the top of the instrument, we've got a wavelength selector. So this switch says wavelength. This is what we're going to use to select the wavelengths for our experiment. Also, don't ignore this little panel. This little panel gives you instructions for calibrating. We'll talk about that more specifically in a few minutes, but the instructions are right there on the instrument. So that's one of the many places you're going to have that will help you find how to calibrate your instrument. The other, panel, the other door over here is our sample compartment. So let's take a look at our sample compartment doesn't look very exciting so far but one thing that I want you to notice while we're looking is that right here there's a little calibration mark there's a little registration mark we're going to use that a little bit later if we move up and look at the display pretty straightforward display it's got a reading for wavelength and this one's called data right now it's reading transmittance so right now the transmittance that's being observed by the detector is negative 11.2 what does that mean well we'll get to that in a minute now there are a few other buttons over here for our purposes most of them won't ever be used there's a print button but this isn't hooked up to anything that will allow it to print so that button doesn't do you a whole lot of good there are these two concentration slash factor buttons we're not using this instrument directly to determine concentration we're just using it to measure absorbance so these buttons aren't going to do you any any good they're not going to be used for anything what about that last button mode well let's take a look what happens if I push mode Oh, the selector just moved down. So mode just lets us go through our four display options. So transmittance, absorbance, concentration, factor, 
and right back to transmittance. So that's a little tour of the instrument. Now for the important part. How do we use this? What can we do with this instrument that we can't just do with our eyes? So, first of all, I said we're going to take a look at calibration. So, let's take a quick look at the calibration panel that's on the instrument. And what does it tell us to do? It tells us turn on and warm up 15 minutes. Select wavelength, select filter, set 0% transmittance, set mode, insert blank, set 100% transmittance, insert sample, and read. Well, once you know how to use it, it really is going to be that quick and that simple. But, let's take a look at a calibration. So I've got my instrument turned on. It's warmed up, maybe not quite for 15 minutes, but we can make do. I've got my filter switch in the position I want. So first thing I need to do is decide what wavelength to start at. I'm going to start down at 400. So I can turn the wavelength dial. until I get a wavelength reading of 400. What about that percent transmittance reading? Well, over here the panel told us that after we set our wavelength and have the filter in the right position, we need to adjust the 0% transmittance. So that's the 0% transmittance dial let's adjust that to 0% transmittance and sometimes these dials can be kind of touchy so you have to be a little careful there's my 0% transmittance so 0 is set now once this instruments warmed up as soon as you set 0 at the beginning of your experiment, it should be good for the rest of your experiment. You should never have to touch this dial again, like I just did. Whoops. There, let's back it up. So now, what do we want to do? We've, we've told the instrument what zero light getting to the detector looks like. Now we want to tell it what it looks like if all of the light is getting through to the detector. So, we need a blank. For our purposes, we're just going to use a plain water test tube. Fingerprints, smudges, drops of water, everything can affect absorbance readings. So make sure you wipe off your test tube very well. And here's where that little calibration mark becomes important. We want to put our test tube in in the same orientation every time. So sometimes test tubes will have a specific line on them to calibrate, but it's just as easy if you can see the word Pyrex right here. I'm just going to slide this tube in so that the word Pyrex is lined up with that calibration line. So my sample is in. Now you may have heard a little click when the sample went in. That opened up a shutter to allow light to pass through it to get to the detector. So now, my percent transmittance is reading 72%. Next step in my calibration is adjust 100% transmittance so that we can tell the detector what it looks like when all of the light is coming through. And the 100% transmittance is sometimes a little pickier even than the 0%. So if you can get it right at 100%, that's great. If it drifts up to 0.2 or to 99.8, that's probably okay. I managed to get this one at 100, so we're in pretty good shape. Now we're calibrated. We've calibrated zero, we've calibrated 100%.